Hello everyone, it's Steve with Aptera Owners Club. On uh, May 6th, 2022, Aptera on their TikTok channel released this video. Let's watch it together. And then cool. This is our solar panel test chamber. Right now it's heating the panels up to 85 degrees Celsius and then cooling them to negative 40 degrees Celsius over and over again. This lets us simulate decades of wear in a matter of months. This is our solar panel test. Okay. So basically, if you look at this, I think this is in their new facility. This does not look like the beta development facility that I visited. Walls look too white and it's too tall and there's nothing on the sides of the wall. So I, this might be their production facility or another building. Um, but they looks like fairly recently they bought this test chamber. This chamber. If you look at the video right now, more it's carefully the right here, uh, it, here it says um, April 30th, 2022. And they're doing a cycling test from negative 40 degrees Celsius to 85 degrees Celsius. That corresponds for people that use Fahrenheit to negative 40 Celsius is the same as negative 40 Fahrenheit. So that's the same. 85 degrees Celsius is actually 185 degrees Fahrenheit. So it is a, a good temperature range. And they're doing the cycling test. I looked at I looked up the various um, uh, testing standards. And they are probably doing this testing standard, the IEC 61646 standard for thin film terrestrial photovoltaic nodules. What they have to do is uh, temperature cycle from negative 40 to 85 degrees Celsius, which is exactly what they're doing for 50 to 200 cycles. And then a humidity freeze. So they're cycling this at 85% relative humidity for 10 cycles. And they do a damp heat where they keep it at 85, so they keep it at 185 degrees Fahrenheit or 85 degrees Celsius at 85% humidity for a thousand hours. Here's the interesting thing to note about that. If you do this test, uh, this 200 cycle test will take 25 days of nonstop testing. Then you, if you do this, the humidity freeze test, that's another 10 days, so that's 35 days. Then the damp heat test takes another 42 days to complete so that is going to be 35 plus 42 that's 77 days it's almost two full months of just testing with the thing running 24 7. Um, i suspect that they just started this so they are going to be testing this for the next two months um I, my guess is that they're testing several different encapsulations encapsulation methods at the same time because inside here they have racks to test multiple things and see you can see their 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 um, preparations here we know that they're using the maxion um, solar panels most likely the solar cells but they're testing their various encapsulation methods um, to see which one and previously we saw hail damage uh, testing setup so they're doing all these um, uh, longevity tests which is really good and it makes me very confident that they're making a very good product that's meant to last a long time. They're doing all the appropriate testing. However, I think that this tells us that everything has to work perfectly for them to deliver a product by the end of this year. So for example, let's say at the end of this two months testing that somehow none of their encapsulation methods work and they have to go back to the drawing board because because all the encapsulation methods that they've tried failed well then now they're two months behind they have to retest everything so their timeline i believe is contingent on everything kind of working the first time so most likely they are being smart about it and working in parallel so they may be testing you know 20 different encapsulation methods at the same time so they're testing it in parallel and i think that makes it a very high chance that at least one of the 20 is going to work and most likely multiple of the 20 are going to work and then they'll they'll pick the one that is the most cost efficient and uh, manufacturing efficient to do but in the off chance that none of the preparations of testing now work now they are more than two months behind the curve you know, two and a half months, actually. Seven days is actually two and a half months. So they're two and a half months behind the curve. And this is probably similar with all the other engineering that they're doing. Their timeline, I believe, is contingent on everything kind of working the first go around. And that is a very aggressive um, timeline. And, and there's a, a little bit of luck attached to that. The good thing is, is they are doing um, 
pretty significant testing. And there, I looked up this UL1703 standard. It's very similar. It's very similar to this, uh, this testing protocol. There's some minor differences, but um, uh, fairly similar. And this temperature range and humidity range is very robust testing. You know, most of us are not going to be working in negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit or 185 degrees uh, Fahrenheit at 85% humidity for a prolonged period of time. So that does um, lead to some really robust testing. However, the timeline is very tight, and um, which is why I've been saying this whole time, I think it would be wonderful if they would deliver a vehicle by the end of the, this year, but I wouldn't be very surprised if, if that deadline gets pushed back a bit, and I wouldn't be worried if it's getting pushed back a bit. They are doing their due diligence and trying to deliver a very good, well-engineered product. And I'm okay with waiting for them missing a few deadlines to, to get that product rather than cutting corners and not doing the longevity testing. Um, but just based on how long these take and when they uh, started testing uh, just a, few, a week or so ago, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a very tight timeline. Uh, tell me what you guys think. Um, do you agree? Disagree? Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day.